What's up, Power Bee Heroes? Today, I'm going to show you how I painted up one of Games Workshop's best terrain kits, the Sigmarite Mausoleum. It's been repackaged and re-released a couple of different times. You might know it as the Garden of Moor or the Corpse Rack Mausoleum. It's the perfect terrain kit to be included in my massive Cursed Graveyard series. So let's get to work. As I do with all my terrain builds, I use a rattle can to prime them. I'm not going with anything too fancy here, just Rust-Oleum paint and primer. Flat black as the base, and then giving it a zenithal highlight with a flat white. Here's Citadel Contrast Wildwood for the round areas, which will match what I got going on for the rest of the graveyard build. I know it might seem like a waste using contrast paints on terrain, but I love how quick the workflow is with them. You could just as easily use the Army Painter Speed Paints as well. They're less expensive. I'll be using those in some upcoming projects. Anytime I give a color, any paint with transparency would work, so use what you have. Then Space Wolves Gray for all the stone walls and mausoleums, which will give a nice bluish tint to the stonework. Here's a quick and easy three paint recipe to emulate the Cursed City stonework shown on the game's floor tiles. First prime the bases or terrain floor black, then Xenothel with white. Then paint Citadel Contrast Briar Queen Chill over the entire surface. Let that dry. Then paint Citadel Contrast Pterodon Turquoise over the entire surface. You could also use Croxcore Scales in this step for more of a blue rather than a green appearance, which might be closer to Cursed City but I wanted a more green hue for these stones. Anyway, this step is where you can create some variation. The floor tiles in the game vary quite a bit. Some are dark and some are lighter. Both of these contrast paints are pretty strong, so experiment with exactly how dark you want the stone to look by thinning the turquoise to vary how dark the stone looks. They look great at this point, but you can take it a little closer to the board game by dry brushing Fenrisian Gray to taste. There you go, Curse City stonework made super easy. I decided to go with Griff Charger Gray for the Grave Marker Sarcophagus things. I wanted them to have a different look from the mausoleums, but still not just be plain gray. Here's where I made a bit of an error. Contrast paint's biggest limitation is that they're not great over large flat surfaces when applied with a brush. I could have mitigated this to some degree if I hadn't loaded up my brush like you normally would when using contrast paints. Well, I didn't. And I started to realize this is an issue and thought maybe if I keep flipping the model over and letting the paint settle back and forth, it would be okay. Well, of course I was wrong. So I just kept going and stayed consistent, not wanting to slow the process down. I'll show you later in the video how I remedied the issue. Next, I broke out the airbrush to spray Gorgrunt the fur onto all the iron to give it a long time rusted appearance. I know what you're thinking, not everyone has an airbrush. But the unfortunate reality is that it's the best tool for this particular job. With all those fence bars, painting them with a brush would take forever. Anyone who has ever painted the railings on a house deck will tell you that it's a colossal pain in the ass. And at this small scale, paint will be running and globbing all over the place. In the context of an old graveyard fence might work, but it'll still take forever. Then came all the details which I painted the skulls and skeletons with skeleton horde, the roses with blood angels red, the rose leaves with Militarum Green. For the bronze statue and the other bronze details, I mixed 50-50 Vallejo Copper and Citadel Balthazar Gold. If you want to get more info as to why I mixed the two metallic paints together, check out this video above. I tried to keep the number of paints down on this build, so I just went with two colors for dry brushing. Citadel Screaming Skull, a staple highlight color, and Fenrisian Gray. Screaming Cell on all the Wildwood and Griff Carter Gray areas, and Fenrisian Gray on the Cursed City Stone, and anywhere that's Space Wolves Gray. And that's it. The quickest and least painful way to fix my contrast blunder was to again break out the airbrush. I started off with the idea that I could mask off the areas with painter's tape to eliminate my need for precision. But in reality, it was more of a pain to get the tape lined up perfectly. When the tape wasn't aligned properly, it left an obvious straight line which was ugly and unrealistic. So I ditched the masking idea and was just careful. It's pretty good practice with the airbrush and ended up being quicker than fiddling with the tape anyway. With both of the effects on this project, I took a two-pronged approach. The first stage of the verdigris was dirty down verdigris. Make sure you really mix all the dirty down effect paints well. I needed to stick the other end of my paintbrush down in the bottle and mix it. Whatever creates the effect was all globbly gobbed up in the bottle at the bottom that no amount of shaking was going to break apart. So if you're having trouble with these effect paints, that could be the issue. Another thing that helps get a realistic look is to load a brush with water after you painted the area with the effect paint and moving it around. This makes it appear more natural and leak 
peek into the recesses. Otherwise, it just looks like it's painted a verdigris color instead of a natural verdigris over time. Once that was dry, I added Citadel's technical Nihilac Oxide with the same technique to add some brighter verdigris. Next was expanding on the rust effect. It was pretty much looking good after the Gorgrunt fur. But next I use the Armor Painter Rust Effect randomly splotched throughout to add brighter rusted areas. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're still here, you might as well smash that subscribe button so you don't miss the next graveyard video. In the next video, I'll be basing and painting uh, some 3D printed terrain. The fourth video all comes together. You don't want to miss that one.